The QPR podcast is in association with 101greatgoals.com. For post-match Premier League press conferences, FIFA 15 videos, freestyle clips and much more, subscribe to the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash 101greatgoalsyt. QPR! Hello, welcome to the QPR podcast. Just before we started recording, um, Jim Evans, who's our guest, said this is going to be like a terrible question time. I think it's probably going to be like the worst question time ever. There's not much to be happy about. There's four of us glumly sat round the table here. There's Gabe, our engineer, desperate already for us to finish, even though we're only 21 <laughs> seconds in because he's DJing elsewhere tonight. And, and we're quite frankly thinking, well, yeah, maybe let's just go around the table and then, uh, then finish it off for the night. Um, I'm David Fraser. I'm here with three other QPR fans. I've already introduced... Hello. James or Jim Evans? Yeah, either either is fine. Hello. You're looking quite brown. Yeah, that's which could be this a positive. Is, this this is me. This is me. I haven't been anywhere on holiday. Out of the box. That's this not is, true. I promise. Um, also, we have Chris Mendes of Hello. ITV Sport, Hi. and we have Paul Finney of Indiars, Funky Flowers, Barnet. I haven't got much of a Barnet to be fair. <laughs> it's all full nude. What a terrible week this must have been for you. You had the double whammy. Of Labour getting spanked, triple whammy. Labour getting spanked, QPR getting spanked, and QPR getting relegated. Mm. What? How much worse could it get? Oh, they could pick, they could give a serious job to Michael Gove. Oh, they did. They've done that. Um, nah, this politics aside, we don't talk about politics in this show. You know, nope. so um, yeah, not unless we get Alan Johnson on, and then we probably will. And then we'll have oh, to get. Be good. Then we'll have to get someone from each other party. We've had a liberal, haven't we? We've so, had Jeremy. What he was, was his name? Brown. Have we looked into it? He must have lost his seat. He, 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 he already left, didn't he, more or less? He Did was standing he must down. Have, we've had Jeremy Brown Wise. on. We've only got seven. Eight. 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 Oh, they've got eight. Eight. So in, the, and then, so in the interest of balance, we need to get Alan Johnson on and Michael Gove on. Won't invite you that week. I wouldn't. And, <laughs> wow. Um, all right. <laughs> no, okay. We know we don't want to do this and none of you want to listen to this, but we're going to do it anyway. We're going to do a podcast. Let me tell you, the, the, the administration first is you can uh, find our website at qprpod.co.uk where it's got all our old episodes. You can follow us on Twitter at qprpod or search for the new QPR podcast, I think it is, on Facebook. Right, Finney, well, start us off. <laughs> Look, everyone knew we were doing... Even after the match against Liverpool last week, everyone knew we were down apart from the chairman who who is still on automatic pilot of tweeting. We're going to stay up. We're going to stay. But we, listen, we all know it. But to go down like that is just shite, and it's wrong. I don't care about this no swearing thing tonight. We're allowed to swear. That's clear. The the, the 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 defender. I mean, to put three centre backs against one of the quickest players in the world, you've either got to be insane or just not caring to attention to detail because that was the whole setup was wrong. The body language was wrong. We got absolutely spanked. Bringing Sean Wright Phillips on so the City fans could give him a round of applause. What was that about? You know, there's so many things that happened in that game yesterday that they summed up our season. Most telling, of course, we couldn't play one player because Theresa May phoned up and said, by the way, his fees are run out or it's about to run out. So we signed a £10 million pound player on an X number of years contract and his fees are runs out before the end of the first season that he's with us. That's just wrong. And that's badly run. And that, you know, the trouble with QPR... And so I have to turn around and look at you. Is it? It's like everyone's looking at this big, massive thing going wrong in front of them, and no one knows who's to blame. And it's like you're to blame. Now nah, I'm not taking the buck, but you take the buck. Oh, I don't want the buck either. Nobody wants to take the buck, but there's a frigging massive buck that needs to be picked up, and and someone needs to take the blame because until you realise there's a problem, you're never going to solve this, and you can't solve it by bullshit everyone by saying we're going to. It's going to be youth. It's going to be this because the youth team is going to probably end up being downgraded again this season. And it'd be Category 3. You will not build a class size with a Category 3 youth structure. You just can't do it. So everything in the club at the moment needs to fundamentally be changed. And the bullshit needs to stop. And everyone just needs to take responsibility. Someone needs to curve. Who? Who? Who does the buck stop with? Tony Fernandez. It's it's as simple as that. It's telling that. 
you know, in the last um, day or so, the people who have worked with him have come out and criticised him. And, if, you know, they, they say, you know, he's a nice guy, Warnock today. He's a nice guy, but, you know, he must not run his... Um, foot, if this, he must not run his airline in the same way as he runs QPR. Um, Jermaine Jenis wrote something yesterday. He was saying, while I was there, you could just tell the club's not being run properly. Um, yes, the buck stops with Fernandez. He gave all. The, he gave. He gave Redknapp loads of money, but ultimately it was Redknapp who spent it on what ten million on Sandro. He's completed ninety minutes five five times this season. He knew he was injury prone beforehand, but his, his signings were just so unimaginative. He looked at his old clubs. He's like, what can I? What can I do? That the, 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 v, the visa the visa thing is just pure amateurish, you know. I mean, maybe it was agents. Who knows? But you just think that we would have checked something as straightforward as, okay, so you're a Brazilian international, so I take it you got a visa, and that's fine. You know, that's it's just kind of basic questioning. Um, but and it's, I mean, I mean, what was it? Was it Hilda? I, I'll be honest. I watched until 3 minutes 54 yesterday because I said to my dad on the phone before, I'm watching until the first goal. Hopefully it's QPR. If it's Man City, it's off. Because I don't want to see a repeat of games I've seen where we just capitulate. And two minutes in, Leroy Fur played this lazy, lazy I pass. Thought, I thought that would be the first goal, yeah. And I was like, that's it. That's it. We're, we're, we're done. We're done. I mean, mm. we were down... I thought we were down ages ago. Um, but as soon as that happened, I was like, brilliant. And then two minutes later, it was so, it was so easy. But the problem with the back three that we had was... That was it. Who else did we have? I mean, mm. you know, what, what we're going to play McCarthy at centre half? No, I agree. To give him some games. We're, we're, Those are our options. We don't ask for much, do we? But uh, but going down with a fight, I think, is a prerequisite. And if you look at Burnley, they have gone down with a fight. Well, they, they won, they're yeah. way way short of what's needed to stay up, really. But they've given it everything to stay up. All every whoever goes down in third place, unless it's Newcastle, will have gone down with a fight at least. Mm. But we can't say that. I think, I mean, and I'll qualify it by saying I don't blame Ramsey for this, but since, since Ramsey's taken over, I think we, out of the possible 39 points, so I think he's been in charge for 13 games, out of 39 points, we've got seven. And we showed glimpses of real fight, you know, in the game, when we beat West Brom, um, did we beat Sunderland? Yeah, he beat Sunderland. Away when- I think even in the Chelsea game and bits of the, um, the Arsenal game as well and the Tottenham game, but really, we just kind of surrendered. It's so QPR to have gone to City needing a result and we don't just lose a bit, you know. We, are, we, <laughs> we get pummeled. I don't know. I'm trying to contain my frustration generally. We're completely deluded. You know, when you think that Burnley... Burnley finished above us, and when I remember watching them play us, they will this year. Um, Yeah, two two seasons in a row. Um, When it was 3 3 at Loftus Road, they were the most entertaining side I thought I'd seen in the Championship, and I thought Leicester were the most efficient. They were were the best team. But, you know, a key marquee signing for them is George Boyd. When you think of QPR over the past few years, a key marquee signing is Rob Green, followed by Julio Cesar. That, and you can say lessons are learnt. But, but when and and how? Although it wasn't this year, there wasn't that culture this summer. But who, I mean, who has been a success transfer wise recently well, for QPR? You know, really? The centre forward, isn't it? Yeah, but that wasn't, that wasn't last summer. Yeah, that was two summers ago. You know, yeah. the, the trouble is, it's like every transfer window, QPR look at it and go, we're gonna, we have to do it again this time. We're building a score. I think we've had way too many players are coming in out of the club. Um, whether that's because Harry likes using certain agents because they all like going to the same restaurants, shall we say. I don't know, but something is very, very wrong with it. But you, you, you know, you, you, the, the whole culture is because you're signing players for the wrong reasons. I mean, you know, you look at you look at what Burnley have done. That's a that's a championship winning side next season. All right, they're going to lose the, one of the forwards, but they just need to tweak that a wee bit, and they're, they're probably going to be there or thereabouts. You can see what they're doing. You look at us, and God knows where we'll end up next season. I mean, if we end up bottom, I think we go into the, the, the League Cup early as well, don't we? So. Yeah, you might do. I'm not sure. Yeah, if you finish bottom, I think you've got... Anyway, it doesn't matter. I mean, but the thing is... That means we can leave it more more quickly. You say about Ramsey, though, but what Ramsey did have at West Ham was a winnable game, and he chose a completely defensive side to go out against a rubbish West Ham side who were on the beach. Yeah, but the rot is so... The rot is so endemic. The the rot has rot. The rot has rot that it wouldn't have mattered by this stage. Yesterday, Alex Ferguson could have managed our team. And we still would have got beat because they were done. That team was done when Fabregas slotted that goal in the last few minutes. 
that is when we were done, I think. Yeah, but you've still got a duty to... I mean, you could say that, but then you could say that Burnley are really... Burnley knew by winning, they'll probably still get really good at... They but still Burnley are a results. good club with a good setup and you know, a good you know, set of players and a good manager, and there's lots of things that have the word good in front of them. They have an idea Burnley. about what they are. Yeah. They, they, have a stru- <laughs> they have a structure. You know what you're going to get with Burnley, and you know what you're going to get of Leicester. Leicester were bottom of the table six points adrift a few weeks ago but actually in, in the first all, all through the season they've been playing well they haven't been playing badly at the start of the season they beat Man United 5-3 QPR you just never know what you're going to get with them it's fits and starts wasn't it the Man City Liverpool games there was, there, there, there was, a, there was, a, there was a, it was a magnet of like above a, we could see what we were doing you could, we could actually go we actually had a, a tactics we looked like we knew what we were doing we were just unlucky they went against us and I thought there would be a bounce back after that we, and every club when they change manager they get a bounce back we never get that the most there has to be something wrong. Sorry, you can't tell me that. I know the story of Mark Hughes. We all know how bad he is. But then he goes up the road to Stoke, and for, he does what he's doing there now for two seasons. So, because he had a club that said no, he's yeah. got a chairman that says Maybe. no. Definitely, Maybe. he's what, working within see, a, a football, budget. A football CEO he is has a, must, a boss. Yeah, but that's, see, David, again, it goes back to the, the, the Sandro issue and everything else. A football CEO at QPR hasn't been there since we've been up, and that is ridiculous for a club of our size. We need a football CEO. We haven't had. Well, I think they would argue that Les <laughs> Ferdinand is that person, aren't they? That, that's what they would. Yeah, argue. but he hasn't got experience in that role. Okay, Every, everyone. But he is. Uh, yeah. so maybe he's the wrong person for the role, and it's probably a brave person since, at QPR since, who says that just yet. But there is that no, role. That, there but, is that role. But whether Les detail. is right or not time will tell but there is that role yeah, but Les, Les is football so that's fine but these wee things like making sure a player can play because his visa hasn't run out but that's not a football CEO is it that's a CEO that's well, a that's structure having the club secretary that's, having a CEO having a, I'm having sorry a, but I work in a company and so do most of you where they check if you have a valid work permit to work here but how is that how is Doesn't that it, everybody works in those companies uh, for me our identity is shambolic Every, you know the other clubs that are there or came up there about they have a clear up you know they have a clear idea you know they, I don't know how we're going to pl- I mean how are we going to play probably badly the mo- is what I would say the most worrying thing for me is that ev- you know, everyone that you read is saying that QPR needs a restructure need a revamp from top to bottom that's what you've been reading in the last couple of days and then you look at Tony Fernandez's statement after game and he says we've got the measures in place now and it's going to be fine this is exactly what he said last time we went re- relegated he's going to make the same mistakes he doesn't agree with people that we need to revamp the club I mean, he says we've got the system in place, but that was in place in October. Um, what did we do in January? Nothing. Okay, we stopped Redknapp from buying his players, but there's no evidence that the system's now in place for us to go forward. We've been terrible. Yeah, and spinning good news, like an announcement to come last week about the whole um, some, something to look forward to. And it's an announcement for potential plans. I, I wouldn't announce that I might be getting a conservatory built. It's, who cares? The next announcement regarding a training ground I want to see is, here is a picture of a spade in the ground, it's being built. I don't yeah, want to see anything else like that. And it's stop with the spin. Yeah. All the best chairmen out there, top clubs in the league, you won't see them on Twitter, you know, you know, being really emotional after games. They're just measured. They're controlled. They're always the same. The best chairman, you don't really know who they are. Exactly. Well, who's a, who's a Burnley one? I don't know. There you go. But the thing is, I don't want to make this anti-Fernandez. I know none of us do. In some is, ways. That, is that anti-Fernandez or anti-Fernandez? <laughs> uh, James, James, James. Um, Sorry, it might be the Northern Irish accent thing. Well, I didn't know you were from Northern Ireland. I don't know. I, the thing, I don't think we are anti-Fernandez. No, no, but what I was going to say was... how Fernandez has handled things because we're very grateful that we have a club chairman who clearly has the best intentions and has the club's best interests at heart but the road to hell is paved with good intentions isn't it he just seems to be bad at sport you know <laughs> just, yeah that's true Caterham yeah. Caterham is an unmitigated disaster as well he left them riddled with debt but it wasn't his fault apparently well, it was er- a pattern oh, wow. but the and, thing look, is, and look what happened to Caterham when he left so the, the, thing, the thing is they've gone haven't they I would, I would yeah, admire, so be careful what you wish for I, but I, yes I admire Tony when he went down the pubs and he's met fans at games I'd like him to do something now and talk to fans, but it doesn't need to be bloodletting. He doesn't need to be fingers pointing and having to go with him. It just needs to be controlled, honest, and a good debate. And he's going to have that chance if he wants to come to our live podcast on 26th of May. He can come down, take questions. It'll all be very civil. And just because people, it's fear that's driving most of this because we don't know what's going to fair play. We don't know what, what sort of team we're going to have next season. We don't know what's going to happen with the debt. There's so many question marks that need to be addressed and he would get so much respect if he turns up or someone from the board and actually addresses it. Well, look, the club know about our podcast and they know you've been quite vocal on Twitter about inviting Tony um, 
yeah, well, to it. I'll use that as a segue to promote our live podcast. It's on the 26th of May. It's at the Good Ship Pub in Kilburn. There's the, us. The Good What Pub? The Good Ship. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's an ironic live um, podcast. Come yeah. down, join us, along with a QPR legend that we'll be announcing this week. Uh, tickets are a tenner. You can get the tickets via the Good Ship website or follow the links on our Twitter or follow the links on our website at qprpod.co.uk. That's two weeks Tuesday. Right, let me move us on. We'll sort of move us on. So we did a survey on Twitter yesterday, a um, couple of hours after the defeat. We put a survey together and we asked four questions, okay? Um, we asked... Who do you think is most to blame for QPR's relegation? What do you think should be the club's number one priority for next season? Should Chris Ramsey continue as head coach? And where do you think the club will finish in the championship next season? We got 314 replies Thank in you. 24 hours, which That's is good. pretty good. Not bad. And, there, and therefore, I would say pretty reliable, uh, the, um, the results, unless they were done by Chelsea fans, which I doubt they were. Um, who do you think is most to blame for QPR's relegation? So, I gave these were the options, right? Tony Fernandez or the management of the club. Oh, do you know what? Shall I just tell you what the results yeah, are? Yeah, please. Yeah, okay. Idea. So, who do you think is most to blame for QPR's relegation? Number one answer Tony Fernandez, 40%. Harry Redknapp, 38%. Mm-hmm. Then, after that, is the players, 14%. Uh, the past management of the club, uh, these are all under 5%. Past management of the club, don't know, no one. Chris Ramsey, 1%. So I think two or three okay. people said that. So you can Fair pretty enough. much... That's within whatever they call the realms of statistical yeah. error. Pretty even with Redknapp and um, Fernandez. Which pretty think, even with Redknapp and fair. Fernandez. Thoughts on that? I think that's pretty fair. I think they both both have to take quite a lot of uh, the responsibility for what's happened. They're both known to do that. Sorry, I can't help my sarcasm at the moment. I'm not feeling very happy about getting relegated. Um, yeah, but... I, th- I think that's balanced. I think that's a b- representation of what most people would say. Well, d- d- <laughs> R- Ramsey's an interesting one because it, it, it's right, he shouldn't be blamed, really. He's come in, but the tactics, that's a discussion all day. But yeah, it goes back to, like, you can't really argue if, if that's what people have said. 14, I agree. 14% um, have said the players, fair enough. They're, <clears throat> they're the ones who go out every week, but... They're, it's they're not all, like the last time, though, is it? They're, they're just, I think the problem with them... No, it's not. They've put in an effort... You know, yesterday didn't do them any favours, but aside from that, it looks like they've put in an effort of most of the games. They're just part of a failing system. Those players will... A lot of them will go on to another... Like for um, Matty Phillips, if he leaves, uh, Charlie Austin, they'll go into another club <clears throat> and they'll do well. The only thing is that we had our both single moment, didn't we, with Sean Ray Phillips again yesterday? Yeah, but he's kind of a... He's a symptom of that time. I think, yeah. I think the confidence has gone. Yeah. Rather than they've stopped caring. I agree. Okay, question two was, who do you think should be the club's... Sorry, what do you think should be the club's number one priority for next season? 71% was establishing a long-term plan. Mm-hmm. Um, They've already done that, apparently. Over financial stability at 10%, so you could argue they're connected. Promotion, 9%. Only 9% of wow. people believe that the club's number one priority should be promotion. Um, after that is settling FFP which was 6% which I guess is kind of that that first answer investing in youth was 3% securing the future of our best players 1% Um, and new ground didn't get a single vote so nobody thinks that is a priority for next season Fernandes must not have voted then (laughs) (laughs) Um, you know what that says to me that says to me most people believe the thing that the club needs to tackle is not what's going on on the pitch. The, th- the thing is, as well, I think everyone's sick, I know I am, of being in the Premier League and just being in a constant relegation battle. That's all the Premier League has been to us. Well, it's it? exciting if you get out of it, isn't it? But We've only managed that once. Yeah. Um, and I think getting beat week in, week out, I mean, I, th- I could be wrong, you're more the person in these things. Um, oh. We've won 20% of our games in, the, in them three years in the Premier League, really. That's, that's cack. Mm. You know, and and, and that and that kills the support. And I think there is there is an element of me certainly that says stay in the championship for a couple of seasons, rebuild, come back stronger. 
Everyone talked about Swansea and Southampton. We have to find our own identity and our own way, really. And that's the only way we can... But we've got to, this time, if we do come up, make sure we can stay there. Yeah, I think until Ramsey maybe got a second win or something crazy, that Warnock still had the best away record for QPR in the Premier League in recent years. he still has. He still has. Uh, he might even still have it. And that, he still has. That is, that's embarrassing, really. Was that like four wins or something? Yeah. yeah. But uh, to, be, to be fair, some would say that he was... Sorry, David. Some would say that he was, he was sacked too soon. I don't know. Um, the feeling I got at the time was that a lot of the players had, had, had turned against him, so who knows? I think if he hadn't have been sat, the worst that would happen is we'd be in the position we are now with a lot more money in our pocket. Not you and I, but the club. <laughs> Tony Fernandez <laughs> would have a lot more money in his pocket with the championship club. Or it could have been perhaps some players are brought in above his head that mm. he didn't sign and, and that led to it. Who knows? Uh, question three, should Chris Ramsey continue as head coach? Yes, 22%. No, 52%. Not sure, 26%. So about half of people think no. Yeah. But the other half either think, yeah, or over a fifth think he should. And the rest, there's a lot of people not sure. I think I did it and I said not sure. What what do people think here about that? I think, I think what has happened has got very little to do with him. So actually, we don't know. The jury is still out, really, because... Would Sherwood have really made that much difference? No, but everything was built for Sherwood, wasn't it? Including Ramsey coming in, including all the coaches, the youth team coaches and everything else. Everything was, was geared towards unless Sherwood coming in. Sherwood didn't come in, therefore Ramsey got promoted maybe a little quick. Mm. I think they have to weigh it up um, alongside who they can actually get in. Who, who, what are the other options? Because I'm sure he'd be a lot better than many of the options for starters he gets on with Les Ferdinand and that's imperative now that he's the you know, yeah. director of football it has to, has to be someone that gets on with him and can work with him well uh, a lot of managers can't I don't understand the War, um, Mark War, Warburton didn't he leave Brentford because he doesn't want to work under a director of football so how would that he, work at QPR he, he left Brentford he was sacked yeah I know but the, but, but the reason he was sacked is because he, um, he didn't he expressed his fears about working in that sort of system but it's yeah it's the, the structure the structure the, 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 the club the chairman's got an idea he runs a, a, a club it's in all Scandinavia. stats based isn't yeah. it he runs a club in Denmark and yeah. they're like miles clear yeah, and Dortmund it's all table. based. It's basically he does it via championship manager. But the, but the it's end, a bit money ball, yeah. championship manager sort of style. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, I mean, yeah, with Chris again, it bleeds another issue of he came in for the youth. This means that no, he's been he came in. So look, we seem to spend the whole time as well looking for youth coaches, youth, youth academy managers, everything else. We, we something like four or five or six, whatever, in the last five years. And, and if you haven't got stability at the bottom top and whatever you're not going to go anywhere can, can I say something there sorry. is an argument that if sorry Paul, no, you're right. Don't worry. if we are all about establishing a long term plan then do not get rid of Chris Ramsey because you can't just abandon the long this, this is a view I'm not saying it's necessarily mine do you think it's a coach you though? can't abandon the long term plan just because it doesn't go for you in a very short space of time but, yeah. it's either a long term Effort or it isn't? It has to be a detailed plan. They have to sit down and say, this is what we want to achieve after year one, after year two, after year three. It seems like from the statement, and by the way, you know, you say that he was believed that we were going to stay up. That statement was written before the game yeah. because there was no mention of how woeful we are. There was no mention of the performance or the defeat. You know, it, that was definitely written before the game. But it has to be like, and it just said, we've got a structure in place now, we'll be fine. You know, it was just, there's, no, there's no detail. And if there was, then he'd reassure fans by, by saying that, by just explaining that, because, mm. you know, he's never short of a word, you know. Question four. Final question. Where do you think the club will finish in the championship next season? I'm going to start at the bottom with this one. Uh, uh, I'm gonna, as in the least popular answers. Two percent of people thought that we will get promoted automatically. Two percent. Wow. One percent said first, and one percent said second. That surprises me a lot. Um, Doesn't surprise me. Seventeen percent said playoffs. We will finish in the playoffs, and eighty-one percent of people thought, or collectively thought, we would finish outside of the playoffs. And twenty-three percent, nearly a quarter, ticked the worry we could be relegated box. Oh, we are happy, aren't we? <laughs> to be um, honest, that, that, that would be me. That's why I did. I think mid table would be an achievement. I'm surprised more people didn't think because we've come with quite. I'm not saying deluded that's the wrong word, but we've come and the, the club, because the club only allows positivity. I'm surprised people are as honest as that on that question. To be fair, because the main thing is, it, yeah, of course we come back, we bounce back. It's about winning championships, and winning championship, winning. Keep up was never about that. I, 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 th- I personally, I mean, thinking back to the last question, kind of this is linked to that based on what most people are thinking, and also what I kind of think. I think we should keep hold of Chris Ramsey, but I don't think he should okay. manage us because I think we are going to have a struggle. There's so many people that are 
actually, to be honest, rightly being released uh, at the end of the summer and quite a few more that have only got one, one year left on that. So we really are, again, starting from scratch. Do you want someone who's got some experience of that league or do you want someone who is, by, by all means, a, a nice chap and a good coach mm. but hasn't managed in the championship? I mean, you know, ironically, managing expectations is let's just survive next year. And for me, Ramsey doesn't fit in that. If he gets a win against Newcastle... And it may, may, I don't know, maybe, I mean, I'm not that fickle, but for me, he's not convinced me enough to be the manager because I think we are in, we might be in trouble next year and we might need an, a more experienced head. I think but, the last two games will be quite telling because we're down now. So it will kind of show whether the players want to perform for him because they may be down. A lot of them are out of contract. So they're thinking, you know, why should I bother? But if they care about the manager and he's someone they want to work for, then they'll put in good performances and the board might look at that and say, okay, he can inspire players. Maybe we'll give him a chance. The, the, the worrying thing Pirol Chris got was the players like him a lot. And like, I think Matty Phillips said, we can talk to him about music and everything. And I always go back to the Brian Clough thing of, you know, half the players hate me and the other half haven't made their mind up yet. Um, you know, is he too nice to be a manager? Is he just, is he, is he more like a, a coach around him to put his arm around him? But if Rangers do make him manager, and please God, he's a success. But if he isn't, then this long-term plan would mean you can't sack him. You have to stick with him. You have to yeah. give him the time to rebuild and do what you've got. And that could... You can't then turn around halfway through next season and say it's not working because we're back to square one again and again and again and again. We can't keep doing that. We've got to make a brave to say what we should have done, and you won't agree with me, um, after the West Ham game, we should have gone for Pulis. Pulis would have done a job. Might not have been long term, but he would have West certainly Ham away. Well, he, no, yeah. he would have done a long term job because there are the, those managers about that put that in place. Apparently, Pulis, was, I have read stories like straight after the end of the season last year at. Crystal Palace Pulis was like in the gym with architects like telling mm. them what he wanted no, where, so. and all the rest of it. Uh, it let me ask you a question if you're Tony Fernandez what what is your what what do you put in place from now what are your priorities for next season deactivate my twitter account <laughs> <laughs> I would, I would do. I think I'd put that fairly high up. Um, not right at the top, obviously, but no. never going to happen. <coughs> no, but they, they, never, be, being ever, serious, ever like, I think look, you, you, look, you, look, you look at um, you look at this profile Asia, the business air as your point of view and branding and all you, the rest. Of you it. look at this season, um, and a lot, a lot of the players recently. We spoke to Clint Hill, and he agreed with it. Barton has come out and said it. Anu has come out and said it, and they said pre-season was a farce. A lot of clubs have already announced their plans for pre-season. I don't know if QPR have. No. Oh, you, don't, that, sorry, you just remind me of something. I was watching the Sky build-up yesterday because obviously I only watched the three minutes, 54 seconds. And then Glenn Hoddle was asked his feedback uh, about Barton's comments at, at yes. Stamford Bridge of all wonderful places. And then he said something about 13 players on the pre-season tour. Now, I know that's not true for a fact. And I think Clive came on a few podcasts back and read out every... There was over 20. So mm. there's this just... Let's just build the narrative in the media that, that suits the reality of... You know, we had enough people there last season, although it was organised late, but it was also, I think, I might be wrong in this, but I think that Tottenham also went, one, whilst Harry Redknapp was in charge, on that very yes, similar did. pre-season tour to um, Ireland. We, we've tackled this many times before, that Harry Redknapp and his coaching staff have absolutely no right to criticise the pre-season tour without taking full responsibility of it for it. Because unless, I don't know, unless Tony Fernandez for some reason meddled in the pre-season tour, that's probably something you can't lay at his door. Well, it Phil- has to Phil- be the responsibility Definitely. of the coaching well, staff. It's Philip Beard. Well, it was Philip Beard who organised it, wasn't it? Oh, him. The but, pre-season. But, but, but surely he follows a brief. So a, a manager, Redknapp, 67 years old, been managing for 30 years, well, one of Red- not shy. Surely he <laughs> knows what sort of pre-season tour he must want for well, his what, team. One of his complaints was the opposition weren't good enough and so clearly they weren't his choice I don't I and mean, he had no say in the matter I don't know it doesn't matter who you play I mean not being funny pre-season is about fitness it's about formation <laughs> going back to pre-season we worked on the, 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 the formation of the three five two, whatever did all that and then we abandoned it three weeks later the only season we stayed up in the Premier League in recent years we did a pre-season tour to Cornwall and Devon and we beat Bob in town 7-1 or whatever the score was I don't know they're pretty so, tough so yeah, <laughs> drunk, yeah but I went to drunk, be fair, I was I was so I was you're Ireland. probably right it's probably not about the opposition it's about the preparation go back to Cornwall drink some really strong side Philip Beard wasn't promoted. taking the training drills I don't think on the pre-season tour no but then you know Harry came out they weren't fit there was this and that so he was getting his excuses in early and it goes back to what I said to you before 
everything screams attention to detail and there's not that attention to detail in anything from top to bottom of the club and while we have that we're going to have farce after farce after farce I, I actually agree with Finney Don't, sorry, no sorry that, that, that took me aback but no, you're right all of the things that we've listed and spoke about it seems to centre around we're all confused we don't really know where we stand that's because we don't have a clear idea mm. really from the club I think the football is not I can't believe I'm saying this. Hopefully this comes out right. I think the football is not the priority for next season. I think the manager gets the brief, stay up, stay up. Going down again would be a disaster. Agreed. Anything else, great, bonus. But we're not giving you loads of money with the intention of staying up. Want... That's all right, Chris. He's <laughs> playing with his phone there. No, must I must be very gonna, exciting. I was going to play, actually. Uh, carry on. I was, um, want, talk Sports reaction to our game yesterday, actually. That's what I was trying to see if I could... I'll leave uh, it for the R's end. Leave it for the, leave R's, it for end. the yeah, R's end. Yeah. We, need, we need a short-term. Sorry. Short-term plan is stay up. Mid-term, long-term. Like kind of any way most businesses are run. And focus on getting these foundations right. God, how many times have we said this? Take responsibility. How many That's times? Need. Um, should players. They, should, we, should we apply for the CEO? position it's still vacant just like as one brain i think no. you should all right i might, I, I, I might. my impression is it's quite a commercial role my impression is actually it's got nothing much to do with yeah, the football see, bit of it yeah. uh, I'm, good with pe- I'm good with people because i think les's side of it is the football now and okay. so it's quite like commercial revenues and stuff like that well then to be fair there's there's, there's a fella doing a really good job at brentford who happens to be a qpr fan we bring him back that's Mark Devlin, by the way. You're all looking. At me yeah, no, no, no. I know who you meant. I just, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I had to fill in the gap there. I just would have liked us to stay up, say that there was a stadium infinitely like loads smaller than ours, like Bournemouth's like what twelve thousand. It's just been so nice to not have been like. Well, apparently the there's a deal in they... place for them to share with us if they get promoted. Bournemouth. Uh, sorry, B- Bright, uh, Brentford. Yeah, that that's that's really yeah, that might happen. I feel so sorry for Bournemouth because you can see what's going to happen, can't you? Red Nap, Red Nap will yeah. take them down next year because they'll struggle, obviously, like all teams do. And Red Nap will be in the background sniping away, he might but even, not sniping away. Of director course. of football, yeah, he he'll be sniping away, and then December they'll sack Eddie Howe, go with Red Nap, and he'll bankrupt them and take them down. They would be absolutely the mad end to do that. <laughs> but the thing is, going back to just one last thing and prioritising, <laughs> you, I think we'd all set up a bit table, wouldn't we? And the key things that are going wrong at QPR are addressed. And another thing, <laughs> scrap that, the, the family stand behind the goal. The, it, we need to put fans back in there. Maybe put the family stand in the lower school end or something or whatever. The atmosphere has been terrible as well. I mean, whether this to do with the struggle, I don't know. But it, there's so many things that need to be done to, to, to make the place like it used to be. You want, you want everyone coming out in that pitch and being like the Chelsea match, they got to them again. But we haven't been like that enough as well. We need to get in people's backs. And the club also need to make sure that people get the right deal on season tickets again next season. If they are going to build this whole plan, you can't lose fans along the way. We have to stick together and the club have to make sure that everyone's affordable and we look after everyone and we get everyone back there because another relegation is not a long kick in the I nuts. I think they're going to need to make them cheaper than Agreed. two years ago. Yeah, absolutely. Because people are fed up. And the atmosphere always kind of mirrors the way the team performed. When we went up under Warnock, we had a real good team spirit. Um, there was loads of good men in there who you know you knew were going to give 100% all the time and it... And it um, transcended to the uh, to the fans, and they always they, you know, much better atmosphere. Yeah. I didn't mind that they passed it to Derry. Helgerson ran to the left, and Derry lofted it up to him occasionally <laughs> for a throw. That, that was all right. It was almost like we. Yeah. I would just a little weird thing. I would like the. I'd like us to end the Coldplay video. Fix you. That, <laughs> the song mind called, that. but it's called Fix that. You. <laughs> um, yeah. I, did I mean, it's the well, irony. Uh, it's going to keep playing until we're fixed. <laughs> Um, the worst band ever. So, Sorry. listen, we we need to move on. We're all enjoying this, and hopefully the people listening to are enjoying it. <laughs> They've but, all switched but, off and gone but, off. But Gabe, our, our, our engineer, has got to go and spin some decks, I think they call it. So blame oh. him oh dear. at Burble Media. You can focus your um, <laughs> complaints to him. I wanted to ask you a couple of questions before the R's end. Players, who should we get rid of? Oh, okay, players, whose contract should we renew or offer a new deal to the one out of the ones that are leaving out of the ones that are going Sean Wright Phillips is obviously number one no you're a very sick <laughs> soul sometimes I worry about you uh, so from memory there's the two Chilean boys they'll be gone they'll they're, be they're, they're on loan yeah, yeah. back gone. to parent clubs they'll be uh, Barton no Barton no I mean this is out, who's out of contract yeah. Barton yeah. 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 no, no. Much, I think Barton yes you know it's way too high think, okay 
Barton, yes, under the right circumstances, he's a good championship player. Yeah, I, there's I no doubt is, in yeah. that. But I can see him going to one of the new. He's not a good captain, club. though. Whether he's a good influence on the club, I have no idea. Sometimes I look at him and think, maybe you're the problem, mate, rather than whining about everyone else being the problem. Maybe you're the problem, but I don't know. I clean, clean slate. No I, 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 um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't Adele. Paul, surely even you don't think Adele that we is should... Def- Adele is no, one gone. of them. Adele, he's gone. But, he's, but Paul, he's got to go, right? Stop. Yeah, well, yes. yes, yes. But wow, that was relaxing. Um, I would st- I'll tell you what, though. I'd have still put him on instead of Sean Ray Phillips. I, I anyway, strongly suspect un- all those things about the club that you hate. Sorry. I strongly suspect that he doesn't all those properly. things about the club that you hate... Yes, Some yes, of them yes, are his yes, responsibility. Absolutely. And it's, this, it's a crying shame. We're crying shame. But what can you do? Okay, who else? Traore? No. Get rid. I th- does he have an extra year? He might be there till he's 16. Yeah, I think he is, yeah. Does he? Does he yeah. get two years? No, he's not That's out of contract. Good. That's good because uh, okay. we can have someone who's not quite Bloody anything uh, play green. for the club. Green... I'm making it up. I don't know exactly. Green's not out of contract. Okay. But Clint Hill. We sh- but we, I think we should sell Green. And He's going to Chelsea, McCarthy. isn't he? And we've got he, McCarthy, He's replacing though. Czech yeah, on McCarthy the bench at Chelsea. I'd, I'd, keep, I'd, I'd give Clint Hill another year in the Championship. I think he should remain at the club, wh- whatever that means. Um, who for, else? Who for, else? Fall in. I'd offered him yep. a chance to prove his fitness. Definitely. I would, yeah, I'd make, I agree with you. I'd make Hill a coach, uh, fall in and give him the benefit of the doubt, but keep him there because we need some people to be like, we actually have, I hate this word, we actually have some legacy with QPR. I mean, it's pretty depressing legacy, a couple of relegations, but we've been here. I agree. Um, and that's why we keep him. Uh, uh, Bobby Z. Sorry, Paul. Sorry, no, go, no, um, no. No Bobby Zamora? No. You can't, mm, you, you can't. Mm, 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 yeah, no, but you can't, mm, you can't. Mm, 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 mm. Sorry. Who else? Um, the the only people I Carl Henley. Lee. I'd go Carl. Henley. I'd say yes yeah, to Carl. I'd keep Henley Carl. because he would he would do a job in a championship. The ones who really want to keep are the ones likely to go. Austin and Phillips. Mm. Hmm. Um, Phillips. I don't think Phillips, Phillips will go. Mm, I think I think say. he will. West Brom uh, apparently sniffing around him. It depends, yeah. it depends on how much money they want. If, if some. Oh, <laughs> hey, this happened. The lights Sorry, have gone. The out. lights have gone out. This happened the other day. Did it really? <clears throat> I'm not surprised in this room. I can tell you. Um, the, 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 yeah where were we um, uh, carry on Austin <laughs> Austin Phillips fair well they'll go we have the lights just went out by the yeah. way yeah you have got a choice with them they'll go and you can't blame you can't certainly blame Austin for going because he's the, the, he needs to make the, keep making the steps up he's at that age for his personal reasons I don't blame him for going um, fair I'd like to see him stay because I think there's a good player in there and he could he, he, he could he, fair yeah oh, there's no chance he's going to stay no nah, no but I'm just saying what I would like Colker yeah, yeah. I think Kolka will stay. Who else is going to want to take a chance on I wouldn't keep Kolka. relegated we've, Kolka? We oh. paid eight million for him as well. I know. Still paid uh, apparently, Inu is going, according to one of the Sunday papers. Really? Okay. That's Stoke. a shame. Uh, I'd say mm, Kolka's probably slightly better than Inua. So, ideally, you'd keep both. That's not a bad done. centre-back. Done. Done. He's done well, but I think it showed that his legs have gone, certainly yesterday. Yeah. And mm. it, it, it'd be good backup because you could get away with that in the Championship. You won't get away with it in the Premiership. Mm. He's around. been a pleasant surprise, actually. He's been better than I thought he was going to be mm. overall. But yeah, he's backup. But then looking at it the other way, if, if, if someone had it, when Warnock came to, came to the club and told you the players that we'd get promoted with, you would have thought he was mad, wouldn't you? Mm. If you actually think about it that way. So it does show you you can you can rebuild a team without players you don't actually know I'm, know, I'm you know showing I mean. a little bit of Paul Finney vulnerability and sentimentality here but there's a player who's not in the championship not wanted by his current club loves playing in hoops Akos Jamie Mackey <laughs> has, he, has he been released has he well he's not he's just not fit in at Forest has he well, he's at Reading he's isn't he he's on Reading on loan but he's on yeah, loan for yeah, Forest yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, get, the thing is, see, sorry, David, I corrected you. You're, you're quite right. The thing about Jay Mack is, hear that, pe- hear that, everyone. <laughs> pe- people are still slagging him off. They go, "Oh, he's not the is." is, is but Jay Mackey is exactly what you need for the championship. He's that kind of like I remember the the games he well even even against Liverpool he was brilliant. That was in the Premier League. He he will never stop running and trying. And another season with Jay Mackey, you would go miss. A lot of people say he's first touch and they'll slag him off all day long. But we haven't replaced him with anyone better. So I mm. agree, but I don't think we'll get him because he's. He probably will go to Reading now. He's done all right there. Mm. Steve, the Reading have started to play well second half of the season. They'll be challenging to go up under Steve Clark. And Jamie Mackey is, I'd yeah. love to have him back at the club, but he's not all you need because he's been at no. Reading and he's been no. at Forest and they haven't done anything. So. Okay, I'll end. We've talked about quite a lot. So this is um, 
There's no one left. Anything else you need for your R's End? Chris, we already had a tantalising taste of your R's End to the show. A tantalising taste <laughs> That's to your R's End. I'm just, this, I this, can't this, that. this is how poor our performance is. It, it makes professional broadcasters do this. Describe the uh, Queen's Park Rangers players actually thanking the fans in the far corner. They want to come back out with their wallets and give them their money back. I'll tell you that right now. They won't, of course. Because uh, when you basically trust your hopes on staying up on the likes of Joey Barton, you're having a laugh, aren't you? I mean, his attitude for that last goal was typical of it. He pretends he's doing everything all the time, and he very rarely is. Uh, they don't get too close, actually, the Queen's Park Rangers players to their fans. They won't go anywhere nearer than halfway down the field. Get over there and say sorry to them. Why don't you? Because they won't because they don't really care about the club they're paying for, whatever they say. It's one or two of them trying to act. You see, Joey Barton now is trying to get one or two of them um, to go over there, and he's going to go over on his own with Rob Green, the goalkeeper, who's on 80 grand a week and has been for some time. So it's just Joey Barton who will actually venture towards the uh, penalty box. He won't go any further than just outside it. About as close as he's come to either penalty box today with the way he's played. Anyway, um, I think that's really disappointing. <laughs> wow. I haven't heard that before. Good R's end. Sabering. Anyone else? Depressing. Anyone else? I think, <laughs> or should we just go into hopes for Saturday? So I was gonna, so that was going to be my R's end. Go on then. Go on then. Um, let's not play, let's hit it long to Bobby Zamora's head to try and flick it onto Charlie Austin. Let's try and think about something that we might start playing or a way we might start playing with um, going ahead for next year. Well, I'd play the kids. Just play. I, a I was just going to say, team. I'll jump in there. Don't play anyone who's not likely to be here next season. I don't care what will be the worst that will happen. We'll get done six 0 again. So play McCarthy in goal. Play Furlong at right back. Play players who might be here next Davity. season. Apart from Charlie Austin, because it will be the last home game he plays for QPR, and it'd be nice to see him. And nice for him to score. And, and give just us a go, wave. Just go with the kids. I mean, the, the Newcastle's relegation rivals might have something to say about it, but. I don't really care. I agree. I think I think as well, if he does bring Sean Wright Phillips on, don't boo. It doesn't help anyone. It's wrong. We know it's wrong. We know it, doesn't, it's, it shouldn't happen. But the booing doesn't help anyone, in my humble opinion. Boo. Okay. That's and, it. Well, the, oh, the, sorry, the, but so, that wasn't your arse end. No. Okay. I just, just sorry, hand and chin. <laughs> sorry, we're all, we're all on the floor. The only, the only positive that could come out of this is that the club address everything we keep saying and the club talk to the fans and just please, please stop the bullshit. We're football fans, we're not customers, and we deserve better than bullshit on Twitter all day long. We know what the problem is, you know what the problem is, sort it out. And with that, draws to a close our relegation commemorative souvenir podcast. Um, Thank you very much for listening. Come join us at our live podcast. It's on Tuesday the 26th of May um, for The Wake um, sponsored by Gillette come down for the wake um, <laughs> oh, sponsored by co-op funeral services um, it's at the good ship in Kilburn uh, go to qprpod.co.uk for details on tickets thank you very much for listening uh, we will be back next week for our last studio podcast of the season um, come on you us QPR QPR The QPR podcast is a West 12 Media and Burble Media production.